Welcome. I'm Jennifer Einwalter, Director of the Jack Russell Memorial Library. And we're here today to introduce you to some of the stories from our past. I'm going to be reading some of the headlines from the Hartford paper. I've decided to start with April 1st from 1932. These would be some of the headlines that our grandparents, your grandparents would have seen and heard. And just to kind of give you a, a reference point, um, Hartford had a weekly paper and they covered many stories from all over the area, places in Dodge County and places as far as West Bend. So some of the headlines from Friday, April 1st of 1932, Knitting plant to stay here. Bear Brand Hosiery Company president quiets report of three plants moving out of state. Another headline from that day, young man of here died. David Harder, age 26, son of Adrian Harder, Branch Street, dies at Pewaukee Sanitarium. Another headline from that day, Aaron home destroyed by fire. And again, this is April 1st of 1932. There was a large dwelling of Leo Bowes burned Sunday AM, men folks away at the church. Some furniture was saved. The large frame house owned and occupied by Leo Boos and his family located on County Trunk K, about one half mile south of the intersection of County Trunks P and K and a half mile west of Holy Hill was destroyed by the fire Sunday morning, March 27th. Can you picture where that place would be if you live out in that area south of Hartford? I can. The next headline, Delinquent County Tax. And in 1932, this would have been a lot of money. $78,121.69. And in the city of Hartford, the delinquent tax uh, would have been $15,419.13. That was owed to the city for services. Theater Act contract awarded, another headline, and going to the theater at that time period was also a very important thing to do. Um, it was a very, it was a pastime. At this point it was Edward T. Rippey to remodel garage building into modern theater starts April 11th, Milwaukee man to manage. Now if you're familiar with Main Street in downtown Hartford, Rippy's Garage still is there. It's where uh, Design Originals used to be and currently is next to Nail Essentials to the north. But if you drive down Main Street and you're heading south, you'll see it on your right hand side. There's a uh, meet Sunday to take up baseball is one of the other articles. Land Lakes League team captains and boosters to take up reorganization at Merton. Another uh, headline from that day is examination of the teeth reveals need. County nursery reports results of examination of children at St. Killian's parochial school. And St. Killian's is still here. Again, we're in 1932. Medical care was very different at that time. Oh, wow. There is a beautiful Kodak film ad in here on page two. Available at Reese's Badger Pharmacy. I believe that would have been on Main Street in Hartford. Beautiful Kodak film ad here. Take along an extra roll. And it actually shows the rolls. It's actually really neat. Um, other things in here, this would have been about a week before an election, just like we're gearing up for, April 1st, 1932. There's all kinds of notices to voters um, with regarding the upcoming election. The county proceedings, city council proceedings are in here. This is very interesting in that um, all of the different uh, bills are in here. And there is a bill in here for $16 to W.W. W. Wilson for library supplies for $16. I wonder what they would have purchased in 1932 for $16. And actually, W.W. W. Wilson Company still exists in some form for public libraries. Um, I've, we've actually gotten things from them. The other uh, interesting ad in here is, it's a paid advertisement, Vote Democratic, Franklin D. Roosevelt. By electing the following, state conference endorsed Roosevelt delegates, and there's delegates at large. So this is again, April 1st, 1932. A very different time in our country. Um, 
Let's see what else is going on in here. Oh boy. Well, this is what I am so fascinated to see. Not only is it an election, but they have published in here the ballot for the official city of Hartford election. And that election took place, now again, this is April 1st, the election would have taken place a week prior. So they're, they, they're making their notices two weeks in advance, like we still have to do, we still have to do those notices. But one of the other um, neat things in here is JC Penny Company has an ad in here and they're celebrating 30 years in 1932. And if you know Hartford's history at all, or if you need a little refresher, currently where Shindigs and Birds on Deck are on, are on Main Street, that is the old JC Penny Company. It also used to be the National Tea Company. There is a fantastic article in here and an ad that talks about how JC Penney's is celebrating their 30th anniversary. They grew from a tiny single unit in Western Mining Town to the largest organization of its kind in the world. Mr. JC Penny founder is pictured in here, and that's a great picture of him, very stoic. And Mr. E.C. Sams, president of the organization, and then the mother store is in here where it started in Texas in 1902. And then they've got the latest and the largest store of the of 1459 J.C. Penney Company Department Stores. And you can see all the different locations where they would have been in the United States. And of course, we had one right here in downtown Hartford. Now, this is a lot of news for 1932. And here's the National Tea Company Food Stores ad showing oranges for 25 cents per dozen, apples, cauliflower, asparagus, iceberg, lettuce, and peas, California crisp and solid large five dozen size, two for 13 cents. I mean, this is fantastic. And here is the J.C. Penny ad, and they are celebrating their 30th anniversary with super values each week. I'm sure to go down there and get myself a new hat. Do you like my hat? Isn't it wonderful? And it's, it's holding in place so beautifully. It's on loan from a very special friend of mine. They have stunning scarves for 79 cents and dresses. Oh, what a steal. Five dollars. Really, shoes, high heels or low heels, plain or fancy trims, one straps, two dollars and ninety-eight cents. Yes, lots of lots of good things in here. Pneumonia follows the flu. Kind of a more sad story in the paper, but this comes out of Madison. Pneumonia is hand in glove with the flu epidemic of Wisconsin, which is prevalent in many sections of the state at the present time. During the 1931 pneumonia was the cause of 2,156 deaths in Wisconsin and took its greatest toll among the young and those individuals beyond the age of 40. Similar to what we're experiencing right now. Again, this is April 1st of 1932. There is some Cedarburg news in here for our friends who might be watching in uh, Ozaki County. Cedarburg Light Plant makes money. They turned a profit, it looks like. That Cedarburg light plant is out of the woods as far as debt is concerned and that a cut in rates during 1932 and the building of a surplus will be affected in the opinion of officials as the result of the fine showing made by the plant the past year. They received all their $1,200 payments. Official referendum ballot. They were asking on the referendum Shall sections of the statute of the Wisconsin statutes, popularly known as the Sunday Blue Law, be repealed? I'm not sure what the Sunday Blue Law is, but it must have been important in 1932. And finally, on our last page here, this is all the classifieds for advertisement. And there's houses for sale, farmers, poultrymen ad here how to use their coupons to have a better crop. The Hartford Oil Company, which was a filling station on the corner of West Summer and Rural Streets, now can you picture where that is, their prices were reduced on motor oil, 20 cents a quart. 
The drain and refill, 80 cents a gallon, such a steal. And I, I cannot forget to mention our neighbors to the west, Slinger. All kinds of information on here from their uh, community. Richfield is in here, Pleasant Hill. Neno, Neno would be north of Hartford. My next uh, newspaper that I have here is from Friday, April 8th. So I don't wanna go there yet, but I do wanna thank you for tuning in for the history of Hartford from April 1st of 1932.